feel much better now Like a gentle storm The Sony PlayStation. Releasing on North American shores in 1995, the PS1's unique wobbly graphics have solidified its library as one of the most recognizable console libraries ever. And in 2019, some people would even consider it to be aesthetic. This unmistakable and eerie look had also made the original PlayStation the perfect console for horror. And it shows. Because the PS1 brought us the birth of survival horror, and it created the foundation for games like Silent Hill, Resident Evil, and Clock Tower. These are the games that would define a generation. So without further ado, my name is Barley, and this is my personal take on the 10 scariest horror games on the PlayStation 1. What happens when you take one part survival horror, one part the thing body horror, a dash of Christmas buddy cop, and finally you dump a bunch of square soft JRPG into the mix? You get, you get this. It's Parasite Eve. It's number 10 on my list. One of the more fun games on this list, Parasite Eve really stands out for its unique hybrid mishmash of genres. Other than Kudelka, it's really one of the only horror based JRPGs of its kind, at least on the PS1. Set during Christmas 1998, which, okay, guys, Christmas is such an underutilized horror setting, and I don't know why. It's so good, it's so comfy, and it's so spooky. Though, I'll admit, this isn't the scariest game ever. It has its moments. The CG body horror cutscenes, well, that's scary. This is the top 10 scariest games list, which, which means this is number 10. This is number 10 on my list. Good job, Parasite Eve. I should never have gotten aboard this ship. Before they became a household name for making games like Armored Core and Dark Souls, FromSoft made a little known game series called Echo Knight. I played this game for the first time last year and it immediately became one of my favorite titles on the platform. The goal of Echo Knight is to collect as many souls as possible by helping ghosts move on into the afterlife. You can do this by helping them complete a task, deliver an item for them, or spend 30 hours doing this roulette minigame. It's a pretty unique game, as in there's not a whole lot like it. It's a weird blend of collect-a-thon meets horror meets puzzle game, and it all comes together as a thoroughly enjoyable yet frightening experience with some good twists along the way. It's also a relatively rare game nowadays, so if you find yourself having the chance to try it out, don't pass it up. And while it's not the scariest game on this list, it still comes in at a solid number 9. That's... Sir Williams. Oh. Number 8. What is probably the most impressive looking game on this list, Alone in the Dark The New Nightmare was European developer Darkworks' attempt at making a mainstream survival horror game who opted for more of a cthulhu s theme over zombies or psychological horror. Much like Resident Evil, you get to choose between two different characters to take you through the story. The revolver-wielding Edward Carnaby and the, uh... Uh, fatherless Aline Cedric. I... Alone in the Dark was widely overlooked because of its unfortunate late release date in the PS1's life cycle. Though Europe did get to enjoy a PS2 port of the game, the PS1 version is widely considered to be the better port to play. Alone in the Dark is an enjoyable experience with lots of chills and spooks around each corner. Just don't softlock your save like I did. I'm still not over that. Number seven. Dinosaurs. One of life's great mysteries. Were they cool? This one was cool. This one wasn't. <laughs> that one's silly. And then there's literally every dinosaur in Dino Crisis. 
Dino Crisis takes the classic Resident Evil formula and pits you against dinosaurs instead of zombies. I have to say that Dino Crisis probably has the scariest depictions of dinosaurs I've ever seen in a game. Unlike zombies, they can literally chase you through doors, and trying to kill them is seriously ineffective. You'll find yourself trying to run rather than fight for most of the game, which is probably why it's called Panic Horror instead of Survival Horror. The dinosaurs are both the highlight and the most frustrating thing about the game. It's genuinely stressful and difficult dealing with them, to the point where I'd say you'll probably find yourself wanting to take a break once in a while. While not thematically as creepy or terrifying as other horrors of its time, Dino Crisis is a tense game that will absolutely get your fight or flight response going. And that's why Dino Crisis gets a well-deserved number 7 on this list. Also, anyone here ever played Jurassic Park on the SNES? The OST is jamming. Number 6 Resident Evil 2 The original Resident Evil games are some of the most iconic and influential horror games ever made. And of the original trilogy, it was Resident Evil 2 that many people consider to be the game that brought survival horror into the limelight. Following up on the iconic first game, Resident Evil 2 really dialed up the intensity by throwing way more zombies, monsters, and terrifying bosses at the player. The game even plays on your expectations too, with the second B scenario adding in more scares and this guy, Mr. X. And boy oh boy did he scare us back in 1998. The locations, characters, graphics, music, and enemies in this game are all unforgettable, and it's no question why it's held in such high regard over the years. But coming back to the original trilogy, I just I just find Resident Evil 2 to be a little less tense with its stronger action film influence and the crazy amount of resources they shower you with. But that being said, Resident Evil 2 is still a very scary game and earns itself a very respectable number 6 on this list. Hell Knight is a bit of a weird one. I finally got around to playing it for the first time last year as it never came out in North America and honestly I kind of loved it. Developed by Mickey Mouse Hitler, or by their official name, Daniel Izu, the premise is fairly simple. After a strange creature attacks your subway car, you and a young woman named Naomi duck into the sewers to escape the monster. However, your safety is short lived as the creature finds its way into the underground after the duo. What makes this game so special though is that the premise of a monster chasing a defenseless player character is very much in line with modern horror games like Amnesia, Penumbra, and Outlast. While it suffers from some translation issues, the horror is pretty much on point. The stalker type creature is fairly scary and it evolves as you progress through the game, changing how it hunts and moves, becoming harder and harder to avoid over time. Though it eventually kind of starts looking like Frieza from Dragon Ball Z. I mean, I guess Frieza's scary. I mean, he did kill the Saiyans, so... For the most part, it's a fairly stress-inducing game of cat and mouse that honestly holds up better than a lot more of the popular horror games from that era. So definitely give the game a shot if you get the chance. Also, don't trust Kamiya. That, that guy's an asshole. Number four. When you think of Resident Evil 3, what do you think of? For most people, it's this guy, Nemesis. While Mr. X raised the bar by having a tyrant bust in and ruin your day from time to time, Nemesis raised it even higher by having a super roided out tyrant literally chase you from room to room. For the first time in the series, you're now being stalked by an enemy that can follow you through doors. I remember the first time I played Resident Evil 3. I was nine years old and I went and rented the game on day one. All my friends were sitting around me and watching me as I navigated the city streets of Raccoon City. There was a problem though. This was my cousin's PS1 that I had borrowed to play Resident Evil 3, and I didn't have a memory card. So I somehow survived three or four hours into the game just fine despite having Nemesis on my ass every other moment. And then finally I realized, hey, I'm like four hours into this game and uh, I'm about to die. I don't want to lose this progress. So I run to my mom and I'm like, Mima! Memory card? Please? 
So we all go out, we buy the freaking memory card, I plug it in, and now all I gotta do is get to the save room. I got within like two feet of that door and Nemesis freaking plastered me. I remember we all just stared at the TV. Finally, we looked at one another and my friends were like, Okay, we gotta go home for supper now. <sighs> Screw you, Nemesis. Screw you. Number three. <gasps> Starting out our top three is Clock Tower. Evolving on the gameplay mechanics from the first fear on SNES, Clock Tower is an interactive horror movie meets point-and-click puzzle game. I honestly feel like this is one of my favorite horror game experiences on the PS1. The game features two playable characters, returning lead Jennifer Simpson and newcomer Helen Maxwell. Though, the moment of character choice is somewhat ambiguous. To play as Jennifer, you gotta talk to this guy twice. And to play as Helen, you only talk to him once. Either way, whoever you choose will inevitably cross paths with the infamous Scissor Man, who always seems to appear when you least expect it. Even though the game can be confusing and somewhat clunky, it's never really frustrating. It's a perfect example of old school merciless gameplay mechanics and has plenty of jump out of your seat moments to keep you hooked. I wholeheartedly recommend checking out Clock Tower if you haven't already. But be warned, there's about 10 different endings in total, so you're probably going to be replaying it a few times. Not that that's a bad thing. Number two. The original Resident Evil. What can I really say about this game? The environments are crude and dated, the hunters are arguably not as good as their successor, the liquor, and the voice acting is silly and laughable. And yet, this is the Resident Evil that still gets under my skin to this day. While Resident Evil 2 and 3 focused on being cinematic and story driven, Resident Evil 1 focused on making you feel isolated, alone and powerless. There was no auto-aim in the original release. All the corridors were tight and hard to navigate and it felt like every enemy played on a phobia that most of us could relate to. And of course I've got to mention the iconic full motion video cutscenes, which I honestly wish were carried over into the sequels. Resident Evil 1 is the OG, the grandfather of survival horror. There was nothing like it before. There's been nothing quite like it since. And that's why Resident Evil 1 comes in at number two on this list. Before we get to my number one choice, here's some games that I couldn't quite get on the list. not surprised, are you? Silent Hill is a legendary starting piece to an iconic horror series that still runs today in the form of bad movies and, well, pachinko machines. What might be my favorite Silent Hill title to revisit to this day, I'd say it's an absolute must play for any horror enthusiast out there. It's a surreal and terrifying journey that shook gamers back in 1999, not to mention setting a new bar for puzzles and games. The piano puzzle still holds up to this day. While Silent Hill 1 never got the adoration that its slightly younger siblings on the PS2 had, it still stands up today as one of the best horror games ever made. 
So here's the you, Silent Hill. You turned 20 this year, and we may live in a very different time, but you're still just as terrifying as you were in 1999. Cheers. Hey guys, it's been a minute, I know. I just want to say thanks to my friends and viewers who've continued to support me over the years. You guys are amazing, and hopefully I'll have a lot more content to show soon. Also, I swear I haven't been dead. I've actually been hanging out over on the Twitch side of things, so if you want to come see me play games like the ones on this list, you know where to find me. Anyway, thank you so much everybody, take care, and until next time.